once the leg section is the length that you want it to be it's time to create the heel flap and that's what we're going to do on these back section of stitches here now the heel flap is half the number of stitches that you cast on cast on 64 with this sock to accommodate the cables pulling the sock in slightly so that means I need to work the first 32 stitches across the top of the foot and I need to do that in pattern so because I finished on a round six to make my 70 rows which was the length that I wanted my leg to be then that means that I have to use round one so I'm going to knit across here round one until I've completed 32 stitches and I'm ready for my heel flap this is what the heel flap is going to look like. I've used a cross rib stitch, which looks like a tiny cable, which matches in really well with the rest of the sock, but you don't need to use a cable needle for this. It's very easy, you just do it with the two double pointed needles that you use for your heel flap. So now I've knitted across the top of the foot stitches here in pattern, and that leaves me 32 stitches at the back of the sock, which is what's going to create the heel flap. This is the point with a short circular where I like to change onto double pointed needles because it's just easier than trying to keep everything on the same tiny circular, especially if you're using a shorter circular than mine. Um, it all gets very tight and very fiddly. Whenever I create a heel flap, I always knit the first stitch and that saves you getting a hole where, the, where you join for the gusset stitches. So I'm going to knit the first two stitches and then I'm going to create the cross stitch, which is what gives the rib effect down the heel flap. You put your needle into the second stitch on the left hand needle, pull the yarn through, but then instead of trying to take the stitch off the needle, you put it back into the first stitch and then slide both of the stitches off the needle at the same time. Next a purl stitch and then you do the cross stitch again. So you go into the second stitch on the needle pull the yarn through into the first stitch on the needle and slide them both off. And you repeat those stitches right the way along your heel flap. This is what it looks like when you get to the end of your first row. You can see that it looks as if you've got gaps all the way along, but actually once you come to do the purl row then all of those gaps will disappear. Now with a short circular at this point what I like to do is tuck the ends of the needle down inside the sock and then they're not flapping about and getting in your way all the time. We're going to do the second row now so it's going to slip the first stitch, slip it purl wise and then you just need to purl the stitches all the way along the row. Now row three is exactly the same as row one except that this first stitch here you're going to slip it rather than knit it. Lots of people worry that they might be slipping in the wrong direction and technically you slip a stitch in purl wise so that the stitch is facing the right direction on your needle but if you forget and you slip it knit wise because that's the direction that you're going it's not the end of the world so don't worry about it because these slip stitches up the side of your heel flap are just going to be used to help you pick up the gusset stitches so if they're facing the wrong way it really doesn't make too much difference. This is part way up the heel flap and you can see that the cross rib stitches are showing nicely now and it's a nice solid heel flap just like the heel stitch one but it's just a little bit different it just gives you a bit more decoration by using a different stitch and we're just going to carry on using the two rows of the cross rib pattern up until you get to the heel flap length that you want i usually make mine about two inches long but of course you can always check by measuring your heel and just be sure that you've got yours to be the length that you want it to be